Week 11 is here. Now we have the Baltimore Ravens and the Chicago Bears. Baltimore is coming off of a loss to Miami, which nobody saw coming. And Chicago, Chicago's coming off their bye week. Now for the Ravens, Lamar Jackson has been playing at an elite level this year. Some may say he's the MVP. Now Lamar playing the way he is, he's been trusting Marquise Brown too much with the ball. Marquise Brown had crucial drops, multiple drops, against the Dolphins. And Lamar needs to target the rookie Rashad Bateman more. Rashad Bateman is their true number one receiver. And that's who they need to get the ball to on the offense in the receiving game. Now, yes, they have Mark Andrews too, but she gets a lot of targets from Lamar. But Rashad Bateman needs to see an uptake in targets even more than Marquise Brown. Now, as for the Bears, they are coming off of a bye. They're coming off of a rest week. And Justin Fields is going to return at home against the Ravens. Now, Lamar hasn't played the Bears yet, and he is 25-2 and against teams that he's played in his first game against them. Now, what this means is Lamar's career, he has never played the Bears. So this is going to be the first time in Lamar's career where he's played the Chicago Bears. Lamar is 25-2 and against teams in the first game that he's played them in. So now traveling to Chicago, Lamar's going to look to make that 26-2. and Now for the Bears' offense, we have Khalil Herbert, who just was a ghost last week, as David Montgomery came back. Now we all thought Khalil Herbert would still see a good share of the offense since Montgomery's first game, he might have been a little shaky. But no, that was not the case. David Montgomery took rain and went off from the get-go with Justin Fields. And in the past game, Justin Fields had his guy, Allen Robinson, finally get involved, and his also favorite target, Darnell Mooney. Now, with this game being an offensive game between these two young star quarterbacks, I have the Baltimore Ravens with a 27-24 victory over the Chicago Bears. Now we have the Detroit Lions heading to Cleveland to take on the Cleveland Browns. Now, Detroit is coming off of a tie. They were 0-8 going in the last week and are now 0-8-1. They are not going to be the first team to go 0-17, but at the same time, they didn't get their first win. Now, they'll look to get their first win this week, led by running back DeAndre Swift, who's been a one-man show in Detroit. He has been taking control of this offense, and with Jared Goff's bad play, DeAndre Swift has really picked up the offense and gotten them going as much as he can. As for the Browns, look for Baker Mayfield. Now, Baker Mayfield got hurt late in the New England Patriot game, and he said that he could have returned to the game, but since it was so far gone, they didn't want to risk a further injury. Now, with Baker's injury looming, this could be a crucial point to see if he's 100% going into this game. Another key part is Nick Chubb. The Browns are by far better with Nick Chubb on the team. Now, Nick Chubb missed last week due to COVID protocols, and he is likely going to return this week. So look for Nick Chubb to be the Browns' star player this week as he returns from the COVID list. They're going to lean more on Nick Chubb, and Dearness Johnson isn't going to have that big of a role with Nick Chubb returning. Now, if you look at all the stats, the Browns are better with Nick Chubb. And with Nick Chubb leading this team behind that newly paid offensive line, the Browns are going to run all over Detroit, which is why I have a Cleveland Browns 28-19 to victory over the Detroit Lions. Now we have the Packers and the Vikings, a division rival that steams from way back. Now, this is Aaron Rodgers' second game. He only returned Saturday, a day before the Seahawks game, and is now a week in with practices and back to being fully with the team, not just on a one-day return, walkthrough, and then play. 
He's had a full week of practice, and he's ready to go against this Minnesota team. His team, Aaron Jones, sadly it got hurt, and he'll miss a couple of weeks, leaving the door wide open for sophomore running back A.J. Dillon to break out like he did last week. A.J. Dillon had two touchdowns in the snow last week against the Seahawks as the Packers had a 17-0 shutout. Now, A.J. Dillon, look for him to be in command of this run game and in command of this offense next to Rodgers. Now, with Vi- with the Vikings team, they do have a couple guys on the D-line, but A.J. Dillon is also known as Quadzilla, and that's because he just runs through people. So look for A.J. Dillon to have a huge game and also for Devonta Adams to have a big game. Now, as for the Vikings side, Justin Jefferson went off last week for the best game of the season for him. He was looking for this game all year, and it finally came to him last week. Now, Adam Thielen has also been getting involved in the game, and Kirk Cousins has been targeting him. And in the run game, obviously, Dalvin Cook has been a monster. Now, even with all that being said, I do have a Green Bay Packer 34 to 23 victory over the Minnesota Vikings. Let's get into another divisional game in the Houston Texans taking on the Tennessee Titans. Now when you look at the Titans, we all thought their season was going to crumble down once Derrick Henry got injured. But no, Deontay Foreman has been taking over that RB1 role even with the signing of Adrian Peterson. Now Foreman has been able to lead that run game and lead that backfield for the Titans into helping them gain victories. Now, as for their receivers, Julio Jones was placed on the IR, and A.J. Brown only saw one reception last week. They need to get A.J. Brown back and up and going this week against the Texans. As for the Texans, there's not much really to say about them this year, except for they're just going to be in for a long rebuild process. They might be the worst team in the NFL, and they're going to need a to fix they're going to need to fix everything in order to get this team back and going. And one of those things is trying to find a trade for Deshaun Watson. Now, once they get Deshaun Watson out and they get the picks or players for him, they'll be able to start their rebuild fresh with no looming drama in the organization. I have a Tennessee Titan 30 to 12 victory over the Houston Texans. Next, we have the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Buffalo Bills. These two teams have been great AFC contenders this season. And the Colts have been led by Jonathan Taylor, the one-man show in Indianapolis. Now, Carson Wentz has been decent this year. He's been mediocre. But Jonathan Taylor has really run this offense. Now, when Carson Wentz does throw... He throws the majority of his passes to Michael Pittman. And then out of the backfield, obviously, Naeem Hines has been catching passes. And Jonathan Taylor has really been their one guy that they can always count on. Now, Jonathan Taylor is second in the league in rushing. And with Derrick Henry being out, he will most likely lead the league in rushing yards if he continues at the pace he is going right now. As for the Bills... It was a big bounce back for them last week against the Jets. Josh Allen in this game is going to want to continue to prove that he is still a top quarterback after his bad showing a few weeks ago. Now he finally got Stephon Diggs going, so that's going to be a key matchup in this game to see how Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs continue to have their duel strive as one of the best in the NFL. Now in this game, I do have a Buffalo Bills 33-23 to victory over the Indianapolis Colts. Now let's talk about another divisional game in Week 11. The Miami Dolphins are taking on the New York Jets. Now yeah, you might think, oh, Miami's got this in the bag, they just beat Baltimore. But the Jets always put up a fight against Miami. Now as for Miami, they did beat Baltimore. Tua Tagovailoa is out to prove that he is still a franchise quarterback. 
whether it be for Miami next season or if this is just a showcase for other teams to look at him in case Miami wants to trade him away. Now, Tua can be a franchise quarterback. He has the team. He has the capability. But he needs people around him. Now, in Miami, he has a few receivers. And Miles Gaskin has been up and down. Now, if Miles Gaskin can continue good play, Tua will be able to just carry the offense on his shoulders with the people he has. Now, he's been dealing with injuries himself, and he's been dealing with injuries on his offense. As for the Jets, we all thought it was going to be a Mike White show for the New York Jets, and he was going to take over the starting role, even with Zach Wilson healthy. But that was not the case, as he threw four interceptions last week against the Buffalo Bills. Now, Mike White isn't the Jets hero that we all thought he was. That was just a one game where Mike White showed what he could do when nobody knew what he could do at all. That was a game where nobody had tape on him, nobody had film, and he was just able to go out there and do what he could do. Now, in this game, I have a Miami Dolphins 27-13 to victory over the New York Jets. Moving on to the New Orleans Saints, Heading to Philly to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Now the Eagles have yet to win a home game and will look to continue their win streak this week, get two wins in a row, and get their first home victory. Now as for the Saints, they were without Alvin Kamara last week. Now as for the Eagles, Jalen Hurts was near perfect last week against the Broncos. Now he was finding Devonta Smith. And they were able to get the run game going with both running backs. And they might be getting Miles Sanders back this week. So look for both running backs returning from injury. And seeing what they can do this week in their return games. Now as for the pass game, look for that Saints D-line against Jalen Hurts. If the Saints D-line can cause Jalen Hurts to have to scramble, it's going to come down to if the Saints linebackers can be able to keep up with him, and if the Saints cornerbacks can hold on to the Eagles receivers. Speaking of Eagles receivers, Devonta Smith is going to be matched up with Marshawn Lattimore. Now, Marshawn Lattimore has been one of the best cornerbacks in the league and now facing off against a rookie. It might be a little challenging for Devonta Smith to get going in this game. As for the Saints receivers, Traquan Smith and Marquez Callaway are going to need to help Trevor Simeon in this game. But going against Darius Slay and Avante Maddox, who have been pretty good as of late, it's going to be challenging for those receivers as well. This could be a heavy dump down game, or it could be a heavy tight end game. As Jalen Hurts loves to target Dallas Goddard, but Dallas Goddard was out with an injury to his head last week. So that's, that'll be something to monitor going into Sunday's game. As for the Saints tight end, they're going to need to rely on them against these Eagles linebackers who have been terrible against tight ends. Now in this game, I do have a narrow Eagles 28-24 to victory over the Saints. Now let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars have been one of the worst teams in these past two years. Now everyone thought that with Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer coming in, they were going to change the team around, but that wasn't the case. And with an early injury to DJ Shark, which put him out for the year, Jacksonville has not been able to get going at all. As for the 49ers, they're coming off of a win against division rival Rams on Monday night. Now, Debo Samuel went off in this game, and he had two touchdowns, and George Kittle was also a great target for Jimmy Garoppolo. Something to monitor is Elijah Mitchell, who did get injured in this game. Head coach Kyle Shannon did say that he has a chance to practice, and he might be able to go and play through his injury on Sunday. Now, whether Mitchell can go or not, I do think the 49ers are going to have a very convincing win in this game. 
I don't think it's going to be very close because Jacksonville has not been able to get anything going. And the San Francisco 49ers have just been playing lights out. Now, in this game, I do have the San Francisco 49ers getting a 41-9 to victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Next, we have the Washington football team and Carolina Panthers. The biggest thing that stands out in this game is Cam Newton taking on former head coach in Ron Rivera, who is now the coach of Washington. Now, Ron Rivera facing off against Cam Newton is going to be a key battle in this game. As for Washington... They did lose Chase Young, which is a huge lose for that team. Now, Chase Young being out is going to need Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen to step up for that interior D-line. Now, as for the Panthers, look for DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson to play big parts in this game, along with Christian McCaffrey in the receiving game. Cam Newton loves to target Moore and Anderson, And he loves to dump it down to Christian McCaffrey. Now with Washington's defense coming off of a win against Tampa, Taylor Haneke is going to start to catch fire if he can get going in this game. Now Taylor Haneke had a different look in his eye last week. And if he can continue the play from last week, this could be a very good game. Now Terry McLaurin needs to be more involved in this offense for Washington As you saw, he is a top receiver in the league. And with Antonio Gibson getting his feet under him and getting rid of the injuries that he had and being able to run all over the Bucs last week, this could be in for a great back-and-forth game. I do have the Washington football team getting a very narrow and close 21-20 victory over the Carolina Panthers. Now we have the Cincinnati Bengals and the Las Vegas Raiders. Now Las Vegas, their their season might be over. Although they're right there in their division contention and playoff contention, all the off-field issues are finally starting to catch up with them on the field, it looks like. Because they looked flat last week, and they did not look like they were ready to play at all. Cincinnati is coming off of a bye week. They're fully rested, and they're going to be able to get going early with Joe Burrow and Joe Mixon. Now, if Joe Burrow can spread the ball around and not force the ball to Jamar Chase all the time, they'll be in for a great offensive game, which is why I have the Cincinnati Bengals getting a 26-19 to victory over the Las Vegas Raiders. Moving on to another divisional game in the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the biggest thing in this game is Kyler Murray. Will Kyler Murray play? Will DeAndre Hopkins play? Two star players for Arizona have been out for the past two weeks. Now, with Arizona losing last week, they desperately need Kyler Murray back. If Kyler Murray can get back, this is going to be a different game for the Cardinals. Now, Kyler Murray returning, which is the hope for the Cardinals, and the Andre Hopkins most likely returning with him. This could be a great back-and-forth offensive game. Now, with Russell Wilson being shut out for the first time in his career last week, he's going to want to rebound this week. Now, he wasn't able to find his guys, D.K. Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, last week, and D.K. Metcalf was ejected. Now, if D.K. Metcalf gets a fine or a suspension, that could be also something to look at going into this game and leading up to game time. Now, I do have the Arizona Cardinals with a 23-20 victory over the Seattle Seahawks. Now we have what looks like the game of the week in most places. The Dallas Cowboys taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the Kansas City Chiefs look like they're back. They had a very convincing and very offensive game last week, where Mahomes threw for over 400 yards and five touchdowns, two going to Tyree Kale, and 119 yards going to Travis Kelsey. Now, in this game, it's going to look at Tyree Kale and Trayvon Diggs. This is going to be the key matchup in this game 
to see if Trayvon Diggs can lock up Ty- Tyreek Hill. Or if Tyreek Hill is just going to be too shifty for Trayvon Diggs. Now on the D-line, look for Micah Parsons. He plays end. He plays linebacker, interior linebacker, exterior linebacker. He's played every position for this Dallas defense. So look for where he's going to match up at all times to see where he's going to bring the pressure or when he's going to drop back into coverage. Now for Dallas' offense, they got going last week as well after a loss to the Broncos. And with Dak finding CeeDee Lamb for two touchdowns, this is going to be another key matchup to see what CeeDee Lamb is going to be able to do and what Amari Cooper is going to be able to do. And for the Chiefs' defense, where Tyron Matthew is going to be at all times, if he's going to be in his zone or if he's going to be manned up against one of these Cowboys receivers. Now, in this game, it's going to be a high-powered offensive game. I don't see a lot of defense in this game due to how both of these offenses really got going last week and want to continue what they did last week. Now, in this game, I have a Kansas City Chiefs 41-34 to victory over the Dallas Cowboys. Now, let's talk about Sunday night football. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to L.A. to take on the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, in this game, Big Ben doesn't look like he's going to be able to go. The Steelers have been planning all week as if Mason Rudolph is going to be the starter. So that's how we're going to talk about right now. Mason Rudolph is not the Steelers' future. The Steelers don't have their future quarterback on the roster. And if Big Ben calls it quits after this year, Pittsburgh could be in trouble. Now to this game, Mason Rudolph is not good. Mason Rudolph has not been good and will not be good in this game. So for the Steelers, it's going to be Najee Harris who's going to have to take on the entire offensive workload. Now Deontay Johnson and Pat Fryermuth both had crucial fumbles in overtime last week. So that's going to be another thing to look at to see if they get less targets and to see if they bounce back. Now for the Chargers, Justin Herbert did not do much last week against the Vikings. Justin Herbert needs to get his arm going and needs to start throwing the ball this week. Now with the Chargers having Tillery and Bosa on the COVID list, it's going to be in question to see if they both play. But if they do, it's going to be a bad, bad scene for Mason Rudolph. But if they can't go... Mason Rudolph might have a little extra time in the pocket. But Justin Herbert, if he can get going, he could find Keenan Allen, find Mike Williams, Jalen Guyton, like he did a few weeks ago. The Los Angeles Chargers could get going early and often in this game. Now, I do have a Los Angeles Chargers 27-13 victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers in this game. Now we have a Monday night game. We have the New York Giants taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The New York Giants are Tom Brady's kryptonite in Hawaii, as the New York Giants were only one of two teams to beat Brady in the Super Bowl, along with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now Eli Manning is going to be on his Manning cast on Monday night, talking and watching the giant Bucks game. So... Tom Brady is going to look to rebound after his terrible showing against Washington. Now with the Giants, they are coming off of a bye. They've had a full week, and it is now or never for the team and for Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones needs to play well the rest of the season, or his job is going to be in jeopardy next year. Daniel Jones has not played well, and you could look at all the injuries he's had, but at the end of the day, You can't keep giving him excuses. Now, yes, Barkley's banged up. His receivers have all been banged up. But he needs to get something going in this game against the Bucs. He needs to be able to show the Giants that he could be their franchise guy. Or they could be looking to move on for him as early as the end of this year and in the offseason. Now, as for the Bucs, their loss last week is going to trigger Tom Brady to be in petty mode, anger mode, in revenge mode as Tom Brady's going to look to throw all over this Giants defense. And Tom Brady's going to be out for revenge 
after last week, he's going to want to show people that he is not the quarterback that he was last week. He is still Tom Brady, and his age is not getting to him. But the age of the team could be something to look at for the remainder of this year, as they have many guys over the age of 30. I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a 31-23 to victory over the New York Giants. Now, as for this week, we could be looking at another crazy week in the NFL. 